Let us pray. Lord Jesus, Master of both the light and the darkness, send your Holy Spirit upon our preparations for Christmas. We who have so much to do, seek quiet spaces to hear your voice each day. We who are anxious over many things, look forward to your coming among us. We who are blessed in so many ways, long for the complete joy of your kingdom. We whose hearts are heavy, seek the joy of your presence. We are your people, walking in darkness, yet seeking the light. To you we say, come, Lord Jesus. Amen.
Today is an interesting Sunday. As our ears search the scriptures, Zephaniah, Canticle 9, and Philippians reflect the emotional tone of one name for this Sunday, Gaudate Sunday, why we light the pink candle. Gaudate, a Latin command, rejoice. Zephaniah says, sing aloud, O daughter of Zion, shout, O Israel, rejoice. And exult with all your heart. Canticle 9 commands, Sing the praises of the Lord, for he has done great things. And this is known in all the world. Finally, there is Philippians. And in it, the very verse, Gaudate Sunday, is named for rejoice. In the Lord always. Again I will say, rejoice. Our ears then turn to other words. Today's opening prayer and the gospel. And we hear a totally different emotion, reflective of another nickname for today. Stir up Sunday. Carol Bleckensop from the 8 o'clock service reminded me when she was in boarding school in England, every girl got one turn to stir up the Christmas pudding before heading home for a vacation. Stir up Sunday. A call from our mother, father, creator, God, that the Holy Ghost will stir up our lazy, inactive wills, and rouse us from the slumber of complacency. Stir up Sunday, a day we say to God, stir up our souls and enter in, so new and glorious life begin. Turn us from unwilling ways. See one who loves forgives and breaks. Today, John cautions we who are sorely hindered by our sins to be on watch. He spits nails, words of fire and brimstone, you brood of vipers, the axe is lying ready Every tree that does not bear good fruit will be cut down and thrown into the fire. John is being eschatological here. John gets it that one day the world will come to an end according to the Mayan calendar. In five days. Five days. But if not then, then someday. So there is no time to waste. Treat every day as the present. It is a gift. John also is ethical. Fully clear about who he is. He is not the Messiah. Fully clear about the fact that the Messiah is coming, so he says, Y'all better get busy doing what you know y'all should be doing. <laughs> to the soldier, he says, Don't abuse your power. To the tax collector, no cheating. To everyone, share what you have with those who have not. John didn't come to bring a messianic message of love. Forget the good news. Bring on the terror. Nowhere does the difference between John and Jesus stand out more clearly than in today's gospel. John is not here to bring glad tidings. John is here to frighten us into action, repent, prepare, search on, 
and examine life. Get a grip on your purpose. Compare it to your practice. Correct your days. Comply with God ways. Spelled out in one sentence. Never stop searching at your core. The who, where, what. God wants you for. It's that simple. And that difficult. <clears throat> Two nights ago, as the story of Sandy Hook Elementary continued to unfold, a pastor prayed, May God bless our children who are with us today. May God bless our children who were taken away. A month ago, my four-year-old asked me how the lint trap in our dryer worked. I said to Zachary, I don't know how a dryer gets built, so I can't answer that question. Zachary replied with authority and flippancy, yeah, and you're not God. I would bet many of us today are searching, searching for answers as to why the joy of making gingerbread houses at a school in Newtown, Connecticut quickly turned from that joy to terror. Why did this happen? cannot answer that question, to quote my son, I am not God. What I can preach are the words from Christine Anderson, which soothed me in an email. The only comment I have heard that makes any sense in the context of a massacre of children like the one in Connecticut is that God is crying with us. And God is profoundly sad. Friends, search on for God in all things, even in tragedy. Cry out for those who grieve. Rejoice in the bravery of teachers and first responders. Pour out your zeitgeist, your spirit, upon the shawls set before you, shawls that will be sent tomorrow to the three bishops of the Episcopal Church in Connecticut, to the clergy person, of Holy Trinity Episcopal in Newtown, that church has lost one child, and St. John's in Sandy Hook. Think about taking a pen and a card found in the back of the church and writing your prayers and sympathies to those people. Finally, let faith, not fear, claim your hearts. In the words of our presiding bishop, more than 2,000 children and youth die from guns each year, more than soldiers killed in Iraq and Afghanistan. 
sin. Will you pray and work towards a different future? One spoken of in Zechariah 8.5, where city streets are filled with children playing in safety. God of darkness and light, bring us hope and new life. In Jesus' name.